Over the last few videos, I've been looking at the Bishop's Gambit. Well, in today's game, we return to the King's Gambit proper with Knight F3. And I'm featuring the play of the legendary Alexei Shirov, one of the most creative and daring players over the last couple of decades. Um, this is just a wonderful game. Stay tuned. You're really going to enjoy it. It's just fantastic. Uh, it really is one of my favourite King's Gambit games. So it's a game between Alexei Shirov playing white and Yevgeny Alexeyev playing black, played in Lublin in 2011. And it's interesting to see that uh, Alexeyev, well, a, a strong player in his own right, uh, plays one of the approved variations against the King's Gambit. He sets up solidly, protecting the pawn on f4. So, nice pawn chain. And if this bishop remains stuck on c1, can't capture that pawn, then, well, white's development is really hindered. And, you know, that's quite pleasant for black. So what Shirov does is tackle that pawn chain immediately with g3. And this was the line that I recommended on my DVDs, my, my repertoire for white with the King's Gambit. And I think this is very dangerous for black. You might recall one of my earlier videos on the King's Gambit with the wonderful game between Ivanchuk and Peter Lecko. Um, that was played last year where Ivanchuk won a beautiful game and it was with this variation. So, of course, black can exchange here, but that opens up the H file and the F file. And, well, white, I think, has decent compensation for the pawn. And the other way for black to play is to play G4 and then F3, which looks sort of terrifying. You know, a protected pass pawn on F3, but actually... White manages to play around that in so many games, and I think this is very dangerous for black, actually. Um, and I, I went into that in, in detail on, on the DVD. But Shiro's opponent played bishop g7 instead. And the idea is this, that after pawn takes pawn, g4, and, well, this already seems rather awkward for white, because if that knight retreats, let's say here, then queen h4 check, well... In this case, that's a pretty nasty check, actually. The king is really embarrassed there. So already white has to start getting a bit creative, and Shirov plays rook g1, pinning the g-pawn. So if that's taken, then rook takes bishop. And, well, that's it's a it's pretty crazy position, but well, let's just have a quick look at that. But actually... Uh, white should be fine in that position. Uh, this pawn is going to be captured. So king f8 from Alexeyev defending that bishop. So reinstating the threat of pawn takes knight. And here, well, you can see the options for that knight are limited. So Shirov, well, he just developed instead. So just sacking a piece. And... Well, black didn't do this, but let's just have a quick look. Pawn takes knight, queen takes. So white has a, a pawn for the piece, and there is no immediate threat for white. But you're just going to castle queenside, you have a nice open file, you know where black's king is, and you've got a big center. Decent compensation, basically. So Alexeyev thought, okay, that's looking a bit too risky. So instead he thought, I'll develop a piece. Sound. And that keeps the g-file closed. d5 hits the knight, knight b4, and a3. So Shirov is sending that knight round the houses. If it drops back, then, well, bishop d4 already, actually, I think white has a really nice position there. So Alexei have decided to take on f3. Pawn takes knight, queen check at the moment. Material is still roughly level. Uh, it, is, it is actually level here. Knight f6, black develops. And now Shirov is happy just to eliminate that pawn. Although, in so doing, he drops an exchange. Ah, well, that's, that's life. 
Um, so obviously there's a pin, so the rook drops. But and Shirov, well, pushes black into that. Bishop here threatens queen takes knight. So knight takes, pawn takes, and the queen goes back. Okay, we can we can take stock. So Shirov has sacked an exchange and he has one pawn for it. So not a huge material disadvantage. And he's got quite a nice center. And black's king is, uh, well, you, you at least know where to attack for white, but it's reasonably safe at the moment with that bishop on g7. Now what we'd really like to play here is to castle queenside. Uh, but, well, there could be the chance to open things up later here. Um, I'm a little bit surprised that Shirov didn't play king f2 here, actually. But instead, he played just king d2. So the king stays in the middle. And bishop d7 from black. Now, have a little think here. How would you play this position as white? The way that Shirov handled this, I think, is truly remarkable. Okay, had a little think. Well, I mean, considering that white has a space advantage, you might like to press on the king side with g4, just make sure that f5 is never happening, looks reasonable. Uh, I might consider that, or maybe, yeah, I think that g4 looks okay. It's kind of containment. But Shirov just strikes out straight away, e5. So that's pawn sack number one. And after that's taken, then he's played, played f5. Well, we see similar pawn sacrifices in uh, the King's Indian and in the Benoni particularly, where white presses forward with this central pawn majority. And that creates a nice square for that knight to come into. And actually, well, after b6, I was looking at this, I'm surprised that Shirov didn't just play knight e4 here, and I think that's reasonable compensation, but no. He's more, he really goes for it. So here, now we have pawn sack number two. Again, it's another clearance move. If that's taken, then I'm guessing his intention was just to play bishop c4, to put that bishop on a lovely diagonal, also opens this, and you know d5 might be available, and or maybe knight e4 again. But black did not take that pawn, instead played bishop e8 protecting the pawn here. And you can see there's a pin, so pawn takes pawn is impossible. And now we have pawn sack number three, f6. So he's gone e5, d6, f6. He's just, he's just forward gear the whole way. I mean, this isn't strictly necessary. Bishop d3, I think, gives pretty good compensation after this and knight d5. I mean, those are beautiful squares here with the idea f6 as well. But no, f6. So Shirov just continues. And the idea is this. Well, of course, queen takes uh, is impossible because of queen takes rook. That's very nice. So bishop takes, the f file opens, and Black's king is at the end of the f file. So it's understandable that Shirov played like this, but just beautiful. And there we go, bishop c4, targeting f7. Queen takes pawn, check. And the king steps aside to e2. I guess it could have come back to c1. That kind of looks, well, a lot safer than e2, actually. But anyway, king e2 played. That's Shirov for you. Bishop takes... And Shirov took the rook in the corner. So it's already getting a little bit crazy. Well, a lot crazy, actually, after this next move check. And the king comes up the board. So white has two ideas in this position. One is to play king g4. And that opens up the f file. And maybe the king can step back here to h3. And the other idea is to play knight e4 hitting the queen and bring that knight into the game as well. And black thinks, okay, well, I can prevent both those moves with one pawn move. 
he plays pawn to f5. In fact, well, my computer tells me that bishop d4, uh, with the idea of bringing the queen back, is the best move. But that's certainly not an obvious continuation, uh, particularly when f5 feels like a very logical move, guarding these squares, potentially setting up a threat of e4. And also, sometimes that bishop can pop out here. f5 just feels very tempting. But in fact, white is okay here. Queen c8. So the queen wants to step back into play. And here, well, e4 looks incredibly scary. Scary for black, that is. Of course, white will take, has to take. And that opens this up. Um, well, again, my computer tells me that after bishop f2 that white has nothing better than a perpetual check, but that is, well, very difficult to see. Um, and instead, black played a move which just feels pretty normal, king g7, to unpin, uh, potential to, to play this, check, and the king went back again. And now this looks kind of crazy. Uh, queen takes pawn, of course, one would like to bring the queen back into the action, but it allows bishop h5 check. Did Shirov miss this? I don't think so. So it's not actually checkmate. White can get out with g4, and that creates an escape square for the king on g3, and suddenly the game has turned round. Uh, the king has sort of found safety on g3, the rook in the corner is threatened. Um, you know, this the bishop and queen slice down. Um, black is actually in big trouble here. Queen d4. An x-ray protection for the rook. But queen b8 check. Queen c7. King g6. Of course, the, the king can't go back because of queen f7 mate. So the king came up the board. So both kings <coughs> joining in the battle. Queen here, king here, and queen e7 check. That's actually the last move of the game. Black resigned. Um, there's still a few more moves to go. Black is lost in this position, no doubt about it. But let's just give some details. So first of all, queen f6. Fails to knight e4. That's clear. So the king has to come back. And now, bishop check. King comes back to h7. And here is a really beautiful winning move, actually. Knight e4. It would have been nice to have seen this on the board. But in any case, uh, yeah, this is, this is winning. So let me see. Um, what are the options here? If... Queen takes, then check here and mate on g7. That's nice. And if pawn takes, check. The king comes up and checkmate. Alexei Shirov at his absolute best. <laughs>